Date management in React can sometimes be really difficult and just annoying, which basically is the reason why Redux exists. But sometimes Redux is just too big for your project. So why not look at something less complicated and more lightweight like Zustand? So let's take a look at it. So to get started, we've got this little basic app, which basically displays account and allows us to double, decrease or increase our state. And to do that, we've basically got a normal button and two components. And our goal is to not need the count and set count from a use state because we would need to pass that down. And especially if these decrease and increase buttons would be further down in our DOM tree, it would be really annoying to always pass them down. So we're going to change to centralized state management. And to do that, we're first of all going to need to npm install Zustand. And now that that's done, we can actually create a new file called store.js, which will basically contain our Zustand store. And to get started, we're first of all going to need to import create from Zustand. Keep in mind, not Zustand slash React, just Zustand, because otherwise you'll get into some trouble. And then we'll start by actually defining our store. So our store will be an error function that will basically return the actual store. And that error function has one parameter, which is a set function, which we can basically use to manipulate our stake or our store. And to get started, our store will just contain two values, one of which is the count, which will be initialized as one, and the other one is a set count function. That function will, of course, need um, a new count as a parameter, and it will basically just call set with an object of what should be manipulated. In our uh, case, we only want to manipulate the count part of our um, store. And we'll say, okay, count is equal to new count. And now that we've created our store, we can actually uh, turn it into a hook that we can then use inside of our React. So for that, we can use the create function. So we can say const use store, or basically whatever keyword you like. You don't need to call that hook use store. And we'll just run create. And then we can just export default our use store hook to then be able to use it inside of our React. So to get started, we'll just remove this little app.js state right here and just go ahead and say, okay, const count equals use store from dot slash store. And this function will basically um, take in a callback. So it takes in state and you can tell it what part of the state you want because um, if you were to go ahead and say, okay, count in curly braces, equals use store, which would actually work, then every time something in your store changes, all the components that use it would re-render. And in this case, your component will only re-render if that specific part of the uh, state, so our count changes. We would of course also like to have access to set count. So to do that, we can just say, okay, use the state, state count, and that's basically it. So now if we just go ahead, we can say, okay, our count is count. And for double, we just say, okay, set count to count times two. And if we now head back to our browser and hit double, then we can see that that part is already working just fine. And now we could basically just head to our other components and copy these two imports right here, keeping in mind that we of course also need to import the hook. And now we can basically just say, okay, set count to count plus one, which would work, but we couldn't do even better because um, we of course need two imports right now, which isn't all that handy. We could actually go ahead and say, okay, increase count is a new function that takes in nothing and runs set with a callback like you'd have it in a set state. So basically we have the previous state and then we just manipulate it to say, okay, count is equal to state dot count plus one. And now if we just head back to our increase button, get rid of this and say, okay, here's ink count, here's ink count. And then we just get rid of this. I forgot to add these two um, braces around here so that uh, these are interpreted as function body, but just as a return value. Now, if we just head back, reload and hit increase, then everything is working as expected. And we can, of course, also double this bit again to have a decrease count function. So decrease count is, of course, the same, but with a minus one. Then we can head to a deck button, basically copy the whole ink button, make this deck count, make this deck count, and this deck count, rename our opponent, and yeah. Now we should basically be able to decrease, increase, and double our state in whatever way we want. But this isn't everything that um, this nice library can do. Because um, if we now were to reload, then we will see, okay, everything is reset, which might not be something you want. And Zustand actually offers you some extra middleware that allows you to um, prevent it. So there is a persist function that you can uh, import from Zustand slash middleware and here you can just say okay store equals persist store so we basically just overwrite our store to be a persisted store we could actually already use this or 
we could go ahead and actually define a name because um, this store will now be stored in local storage. And just so that our key isn't undefined, we could say something like Zustand store. And now if we just head back here, increase our state and reload, then our state is maintained. And if we just look at what was actually stored inside of our local storage, then we can see Zustand store is whatever this is. But there's one more cool feature, which is that you actually have access to the Redux dev tools we're using. So to do that, there is one more middleware that you can use, which is called dev tools. And it basically works in exactly the same way. So store equals dev tools of store. If we now just went ahead, we can see, okay, it found out that we are using um, Redux. <laughs> so something that uses the Redux store at least. And now if we increase it a bit, then we can see anonymous and it always increased our state. And we can even roll back a bit to a previous position like three or even back to one. And yeah, basically traverse our state changes so that we can debug stuff easier, which is always nice. But uh, maybe you don't like this um, anonymous bit right here, which is easy to fix as well, because this set function actually has a variety of parameters. The first one, which we'll just set to false, I'm going to go into what that is shortly. And then a label basically, which will be the label that is used inside of the Redux toolkit. So we can just uh, go ahead and say, increase count, decrease count, and set count. And now if we just open this again, increase it a bit, double it a bit, decrease it a bit, then we can see we ran increase, we can set, we ran decrease, and yeah, that's just a lot easier for debugging purposes. So now let's check what this false here actually does. So false is actually a default value for this, so that's fine so far. And what it basically does is it tells uh, the browser whether to overwrite your whole store when you run a set or whether to manipulate it. So right now we're manipulating it because we aren't saying um, I want set count to be persisted, I want increase count to be persisted, I want decrease count to be persisted. We're just saying I want count to change. So if we were to set this to true and if we then were going to say, okay, there's another value, so other value right here that for example is set to seven and we wanted to display it right here. So if we just displayed that right now, then everything is working. We can see our seven here. But if we now ran this function, then you can see the seven is removed and the double button doesn't work anymore, which is the case because our store is now basically deleted. The only thing that's left is count because we set this to true so that our store is completely replaced by this array. So this can be helpful sometimes, but most of the time it isn't. If you wanted to say that this is true just for whatever reason, then you would need to actually say, okay, state becomes dot 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 state comma count new count. So you basically maintain all the state and then you overwrite the count. This of course isn't really sensible because if you were to do this, then you could also just set this to false. But yeah, that's up to you. If we now went back here and ran double, then you can see our seven is maintained and our buttons still work. Okay, so I think that this is awesome, especially the fact that you can run Redux toolkit with something that isn't Redux, like a really lightweight library like this one. But maybe you want something even more like red, right? So how about you check out this video where I'll show you how to use pure React for global state management. As light red as possible, basically. So if you're interested, then please click right here. And otherwise, I hope you're going to have a good day.